Hello YouTube and Facebook. Welcome to the garage once again. We're going to talk about some golf cart related issues today like we always do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, we may interact with some live people. If you're watching in the live, then feel free to ask a question. Uh, feel free to say, what's up, Tim? Uh, I am Tim with Golf Cart Garage. I am a member of the Gearheads On Demand service that we offer here. I'll explain more about that in the uh, later on in the in this show. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can click on the link in the description and that'll take you to the scheduling page. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it is a way that you can talk with me about your golf cart related issue one-on-one, -on -one, either myself or, or one of the other technicians. Well, since the garage is open, let's get started with the regular questions. Question number one. I have a club car golf cart cart speed reduced to about half speed fully charged batteries only two years old been told it could be the speed sensor or M core what is your opinion thanks in advance well <clears throat> I'll tell you what let's do let's take him one at a time it's most likely if it's not your batteries if it's not your batteries so I'm, I'm counting on you to be sure that it's not your batteries because I always like to eliminate batteries you know first but let's assume it's not your batteries. Let's go to the to the uh, speed sensor. You mentioned the speed sensor. The way that a speed sensor fails on a club car, especially because I've seen it many times, is you get on the car and you take off, and the car takes off normally at first. But in the in the just a few seconds, boom, it drops down to like a crawl. Now that's a common speed sensor fault. Now, M core. The, uh, if, you, if your car has decreased in speed to half because of your M core, it would have been a gradual decline in speed over the life of your car. Like it would most likely wouldn't have all of a sudden one day cut it in half. Most likely. Now anything is possible with an electrical system, but most likely that's, that would be, it would be a gradual decline in speed. So I hope that helps you decide which way you might be, be leaning toward. Number two. I have a 2008 Club Car DS. It will run in small stints, but stalls out and stops. Any way to test the solenoid versus speed controller? It stalls out and stops. Okay, well, I would have questions about your batteries first because you know, could you you could have one battery dropping out? You know, could be the issue. Uh, because if you've got one battery dropping out, it, the cart will run for a short stint, and then that one battery drops out, then the car is going to stall. So one battery dropping out would cause the exact same symptoms that you're describing. So I'd want to eliminate that as being, the, as being the problem first. And the time to do that would be test the batteries at the point of failure. I know I say that all the time, but it's a, that's the best time to find a battery, a bad battery or a battery that's dropping out is you test them with a voltmeter at the point of failure. So in other words, have your voltmeter with you and when your cart fails, go through your battery pack and test then. And you might find one that's a lot lower than the rest. Let's see, number three. Bought an easy go S4 lithium cart for my farm with 15 inch Paramount MT tires. We use the cart in the fields and trails, and I mean to tell you, it is rough riding. I tried lowering the tire pressure and got some ride relief, but I'm thinking I need all terrain balloon tires. Your thoughts? Ah, uh, that's my thoughts exactly. Uh, you you said 15 inch tires, but I'm I'm assuming you probably meant 15 inch rims because uh, regular stock golf cart tires are uh, 18 inch. So you're you're probably running 15 inch rims, and if that is the case, that means your tire is most likely a very low profile tire. So even with the air pressure adjustment, you don't have a lot of room there for air pressure adjustment. But when you get a bigger tire. A higher profile tire and even a smaller rim might be the answer. Get a whole new set with a smaller rim so you have a higher profile tire with a smaller rim then you have way more room for air pressure adjustment. That might be if you know if you're if it's a, a severe case that might be what you need to do. That was number three. 
Let me check to see if there's any questions anywhere so far. I don't see anything. We'll go to number four. Can you provide any tips or instructions for installing a replacement controller? I've just purchased a Navitas TAC 2 AC motor controller from a 2009 EasyGo RXV Danahar model. Any words of wisdom would be appreciated. All right, well, it's not complicated at all. Don't panic or anything like that. Just, just a couple of things that you might want to do that are kind of important when, when replacing the controller. When you replace a controller, you've got to disconnect a lot of wires. Those are big wires. And those wires all have power going to them, unless you remove one of your battery cables. That would be the first thing I would do. Remove one of your battery cables, any one. Just, just find, look at your batteries, take a battery cable completely off and set it to the side. What that did is that you just broke the circuit, so there's not going to be any power back there going to your controller at that point. Also, put your car in tow or maintenance, whatever the switch says on a 2009 RXV. I don't remember off the top of my head. It either says tow or maintenance. So put that switch in tow, remove a battery cable, put it in tow first, then remove a battery cable, then take a picture of your controller, of your stock controller that's in your car. Everything is labeled and everything is going to be plug and play, even with this, the, the AC controller. If you got it, if you got the correct one for your car, then everything is just going to be plug and play. Every one of those big wire connections on your stock controller is labeled M minus, M, uh, M plus, B minus, B, B plus. Those connections are going to be labeled on your new AC controller also. So it's just swapping those wires to those to those points and moving those plugs into the to the new plugs on your AC, on your Navitas controller. So it's not difficult at all, but just make sure that you've got good pictures and you put it in tow and remove a battery cable first. Number five. I installed a six inch. I think you mean, instead of A-frame, you mean 6-inch A-arm lift on my 97 Club Car DS. It still has stock shocks. Should I replace them or modify them since I installed the lift kit? Thanks. Uh, I'm not sure I understand your question because lift kits, what they normally do, they're designed to use the stock shocks. Uh, what they generally do, they lift the car but they, somewhere in the lift kit design, they'll relocate the shock mount. Like the shock mount, they'll have to raise it up a little bit so the stock shock will still fit. That's what most lift kits that, I'm, you know, that, that are sold today, that's what they do. Uh, unless, if they don't do that, then they'll come with their own shocks. They'll come with their, you know, the lift kit itself will come with their own shocks. And I tell you this, shocks don't do a whole lot on a golf cart. And golf carts... Uh, Except for Yamaha, Yamaha does a little different. But anyway, easy go in club car. The the weight of the golf cart and the suspension is all on the springs. You know, you're in the rear, you've got leaf springs. In the front, you've got a leaf spring on a club car, and you've got leaf springs on an easy go. Uh, so it's mainly dependent on the springs. The shock on the golf cart, you can pull it apart and push it together, and you, there, you hardly feel any resistance at all. There is some, but not a lot on a stock shock. It is mainly just there to soften or dampen the blow. You know, when you're when you're driving and you hit bumps, you know, it's, it's a hard hit. Well, if, if a shock senses a hard hit, it stiffens up a little bit more just to dampen the blow. But you could ride around on your golf cart with the shocks completely removed on an easy go and a Yamaha, uh, easy go in a club cart, and you might not even tell a difference on flat ground. Uh, so they don't really do a whole lot. So that's up to you if you think you need to change your shocks, but it, uh, you probably don't. Okay, that was number five. Got Madeline Perez. Tim, you're always so good at explaining what the issues are. Thank you. Got Rhea in the chat on Facebook. What's up, Rhea? Let's see. Got Karina Gonzalez on YouTube. Let's see. What's up, Karina? Hi, Tim. Recently purchased a 92 Club Car DS Series and added a 3-inch lift and 20-inch tires. Also have all new Trojan batteries all day long at 17 miles an hour, which I'm happy with, but struggles on steep hills. Is there anything I can do to increase torque at a reasonable price? Well, on a 
on a, a uh, on an electric golf cart, one way to increase torque is to get a bigger amp controller. Like if you're still running the stock controller, well, he says it's a 92 series. Now, wait a minute, 92. That is going to be one of the first years, I think, for a controller. So if it's a controller cart, let me, let me rephrase. If this is a controller cart, I understand it's a series cart, but if it's a controller series cart, then you could get a bigger amp controller. If it is not a controller cart, that means it is a resistor cart, and you, there's not a lot you can do. But uh, if it's a controller cart, the first thing you can do would be increase the amperage of your controller, get a bigger amp controller. That could help increase torque. Uh, another thing you could do is that they make torque motors for series carts. Just get a torque motor. And in fact, you would get the best benefit if you did a higher amp controller and a torque motor at the same time. Let's see here. Number six. Are parts available to increase torque as opposed to speed? <laughs> well, I, I, we just talked about that. Yes, you. There are torque motors. Just it. Just that alone would increase your torque. Putting a torque motor in your cart. Uh, generally speaking, a torque motor is going to be slower than a than a speed motor or a, or a motor that has a combination of speed and torque. They, they don't turn a lot, torque motors don't turn a lot of RPMs, but they have a lot of power. They also like to suck a lot of amps out of the controller. I mean, that's, uh, that's why the, the combination of a torque motor and a bigger controller works so well uh, if you're trying to just increase torque. All right, let's see, number seven. I have a 2016 EasyGo TXT. We would like to improve the very harsh ride and convert to lithium if feasible. Is that possible with this cart? If not, where could we find a comfortable riding lithium cart? Thank you for your time. Uh, you can go to lithium for sure. You, you can go to lithium on any electric golf cart nowadays. Uh, lithium is readily available and it will make a world of difference because you're going to have a lighter ride, uh, much lighter than, than what you were pulling around before. So just that alone is going to uh, show, it, it's going to feel like an, a performance increase. Just the fact that you're 300 pounds lighter or close to 300 pounds lighter. And so your golf cart's not having to work as hard in order to pull the same load because you decrease so much weight. So yeah, it's very possible. Uh, and if you're still running if you want to get a more comfortable ride, see that there's a, there is a downside to that though. If you decrease 300 pounds out of your golf cart, this is the only downside I know of besides the cost of lithium. Obviously lithium is very expensive. So that is not necessarily a downside. It's getting better. The cost of lithium is getting better all the time. But the only other downside to it is when you decrease your golf cart weight by 300 pounds, guess what's going to happen to your ride? You know, your smoothness of your ride is going to be even stiffer than it was before. So if it's stiff now and then you take 300 pounds out, it's going to even be tighter. It's going to be tighter. So you may end up having to, if you're running heavy, if you're using stock leaf springs, there's nothing you can do there. If you're running heavy duty leaf springs, you might switch back to stock leaf springs. That may give you a little bit of a relief in the ride. Or you may have to do what I talked about earlier. You may have to change your whole tire and rim setup. Go with a smaller rim with a taller tire to give you more room to adjust air pressure. That'd be all you could do. That was number seven. So let me just check and make sure we don't have any more questions. Karina says, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Karina. Number eight is where we're at. Six volt batteries on a 36 volt EasyGo TXT all had load test results 6-4. Is it time to replace the batteries?
Okay, I don't understand what the load test 6-4 result means. Uh, let me tell you what a, a proper load test would be, like at a golf cart shop that, where they had a discharge machine or a, a, a discharging load tester machine for golf carts. I'm not talking about a 12-volt load tester. I'm talking about a, a discharge tester that can discharge the entire pack all at once. The results that they gave you back from that machine test would be in minutes. In other words, they would hook the machine to your battery pack, your whole battery pack. As soon as they do that, they hit the start button and a timer starts going down while it's putting a load on your battery pack. And depending on how long it, how long that timer goes before your battery pack gets to an unsafe level, before it starts getting so low in voltage that it starts damaging itself, it will shut off. Depending on how many minutes it takes to get to that point, they can give you a really good idea of how good your battery pack is. So in other words, if they're telling you, if that's 6-4, if that's a typo, and that was 64 minutes, well, a normal, a brand new battery pack could go about 110 to 115 minutes on the, on the discharge machine. So most legitimate golf cart companies, if they sell a battery pack or they're giving you advice on whether you need a new battery pack or not, Anything under 75, they start in 75 minutes on the discharge machine, they start telling you that uh, you're, you're getting close to needing to replace. You don't need to replace now, but you're getting close. You get down to about 50 minutes and your golf cart is half, will, will go half as long as it used to when, when it was new. So you're getting to the point where you probably want to replace if you start getting down to about 50 minutes on the discharge machine. So I'm not sure what the 6-4 results mean. I'm not sure what kind of discharge test they did there. Let's see. Number nine. My six eight volt Trojan system is starting to weaken according to the warning light. Okay, you got six eight volt Trojans, so that's a 48 volt system. And we must be talking about a club car since you said the warning light. The performance hasn't changed, but the light comes on and I finish, as I finish around the golf, this never happened until recently. I have a watering system and my garage is heated and air conditioned. The batteries are 22 months old and I play two rounds a week. How can I tell if it's the batteries or the charger? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> well, <coughs> you could have one battery dropping out. That's for sure. Uh, at the time, the best way to check would be at the time that light comes on, the warning light, check right then at that point uh, with your voltmeter and you might find one of your batteries a lot lower than the rest. That would be the time to check it because that, if it's a club car we're talking about, we're talking about that light on the dash and that light on the dash will come on for low voltage. It comes on for other reasons too, but it will come on for low voltage. So you might want to check that at the time of failure, like I said. Let's see here. That was number nine. So we only have one more. Let me see what's going on. Anybody, any more questions? I don't see any. Number 10. Is it okay to leave your ignition key in the on position when charging your electric golf cart? Well, the answer to that is yes, it's okay. If everything is working properly, if everything in your golf cart is working properly, then it doesn't matter if your key is on, if your key is off, it doesn't matter if your tow run switch is on tow or if it's on run. None of that really matters if everything is working. Now, if it's not, if everything's not working correctly, then it might not be okay to leave your key on. The, the way to check, see if it's okay to leave your key on, when you turn the key on, as long as your solenoid does not click when you just turn the key on only, then it's okay to, to leave it on and charge your cart and do whatever you want to, because that means your, your activation circuit is still not closed. It's your activation circuit for your solenoid should not close unless the key is on, car is in forward, and you touch the accelerator pedal just a little bit. That's when it completely closes. So you got three switches there that, that are open. So just your key on shouldn't make one difference at all. All right. Before we give the tip, 
we will we will run the coupon code that we're still running but guess what Tim giveaways get 5% off any parts at golfcartgarage.com expires tomorrow so you've only got it expires December 2nd but it is still good as of now Tim 5 is if you get 5% off any parts at checkout at golfcartgarage.com so use that code and by the way and next week when uh when I come back we will we'll be doing another code so it's not going to be this one this one's going to expire but we'll be giving we'll be giving some other stuff away uh, it might be a code, maybe something else. I don't know exactly what it's going to be, but we will be giving some other stuff away uh, next week. So stay tuned or come back and, you know, and like and subscribe if you like this content. And you'll get notified when I'm on the air so you don't even have to remember that it's Tim Tuesday Thursday because you'll get notified automatically. All right. Now, we've, now we're down to the point where we will give uh, this week's tip. Okay. This I, I talk about this a lot, but they they want to put uh, they want to get the tips short, and so they can post them all over the place. Just the little golf cart tips. But I, I give tips throughout this throughout this show. Every time I every time I go on the air, I give tips all the time. So if I repeat myself, you know, forgive me because I'm always giving tips, and and but we need to shorten some of the things. So this week's tip is for gas cars. If you do not know how to crank your gas car in neutral then learn how to crank it in neutral. Uh, some club cars, it's a little bitty thing behind the forward and reverse switch, a little yellow cam I've talked about before. You've got a twist and then you can crank it in neutral. Some cars, Yamaha, some Yamahas, you just put the shift lever in between forward and reverse and you can crank it in neutral. Occasionally when you're doing your yearly service and you're changing your oil and you're looking at your belts, you're, you're checking for dry rot and cracks in your belts, I want you to crank your car in neutral. Rev it up and watch for smooth operation of both of your clutches. Your drive clutch, in and out, belt rides to the top, belt rides to the bottom. Your driven clutch, in and out, belt rides to the top, belt rides to the bottom when, when you got RPMs on. They work opposite of each other. It's, that creates infinite gear ratios in your car, which is cool. Uh, but they do the exact opposite. So watch your clutches for smooth operation. If you notice any jerkiness or anything as you're revving up your car, you might have a clutch issue. Now that's the, that's this week's tip. All right, that's going to be it for today. This was episode 76, believe it or not. We will be back. I will see everybody on Tuesday. So we'll see you on Tuesday. I want to thank everybody in the live chat for coming. We'll give a shout out to Karina on YouTube. We'll give a shout out to Madeline and Rhea on Facebook. Thank you all for coming. I will see you all later. The garage is now closed.